Now this call, Rabbana innana sami'na munadiyan yunadi liliman an aminu bi rabbikum fa'amanna. Master, we heard, no doubt about it, we are the ones in fact, we heard the call of some caller, somebody we didn't know, munadiyan, not al-munadi, the caller, a caller. We didn't even know who this person was. But what he was calling to was faith. Now here the idea in the language is, you don't know the person, but what they're calling to appeals to you. And that's really important. Because now Allah is teaching us that you're supposed to judge the ideas that are being presented before you judge the person who's presenting them. Okay? As, they come clo as, as you come closer to the person, maybe you first hear something that makes sense. Then you don't just stop, start listening to the idea, then you investigate who's saying it. Who's saying it? And as you get closer, you realize this is a pretty decent person. So maybe I should listen further. So this process I want to explain to you, first step, we don't judge people when they're saying something. If you don't know someone and they're talking, like they have tattoos all over their face or whatever, you're not going to dismiss them because of how they look. You'll still hear them out. You will still hear them out. But to hear them out further, you are going to have to investigate who is talking. The second step, let me find out who this person is. And as you try to find out more about this person, I'm not saying dig up dirt on them, just kind of ask around, who is this person, what are they about, you know, what are they claiming to be, what are, what are, they, what are they like, ask around a little bit. And you find out good things, then you listen even more. If you find out bad things, and it's, it's not hearsay, it's actually convincing, like, it's bad stuff, then even, this per, even though this person is saying good things, impressive things, you're going to walk away. Why? Because when their character is no longer, his character is down here, but their words are up here, it doesn't really mean anything. You can be a good speaker, but if you're a terrible human being, you're a terrible human being. Your words are just empty. Your words are empty. And the other thing also, when somebody is speaking, a caller, and you want to listen to them carefully, what is the logical thing to do if you're walking by and somebody is speaking out loud, and you kind of heard them, and you want to hear more, what would you do? You would approach them, wouldn't you? You'd come closer. You wouldn't walk further away. You'd come cl if you're interested in listening, you'd actually come closer. And the closer you come, do you have a better view of the person? Do you... Now, in, are you now in a position to know more about this person? Yes. So the idea here is they heard something, but since they responded to this call, they came closer. And as they got closer to the Prophet ﷺ, they got impressed. They were impressed. Now apply that to the Muslims. Imagine that we are making a call to Islam. Imagine there's a YouTube video, or there's a, a blog, or there's an article, or there's a post on Facebook that's telling some, some people about faith, telling them about Allah. And some random stranger somewhere in the world, you know, just clicks on it and reads it or watches this video. And they say, wow, that's pretty interesting. I never knew. And then they decide that they want to be, they want to listen in a little closer. But they can't get close online, so what do they do? They go meet a Muslim. Or they go near a, a, a mosque or something, a masjid or something, right? Or they have, so they, they heard some kids in their school are Muslim, so maybe I should just go see what they're like. Now depending on whether or those, those Muslims that they go try to find out about are Muslim, practicing Muslims or Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon Isn't that going to affect their impression of Islam? They might say to themselves, well, I thought it was pretty impressive when I saw and heard about it But when I actually met these people, I wanted nothing to do with it Is that possible? That's actually something that I experienced A, a, a young lady came to me in uh, Alabama Really amazing story This, this girl, um, she lives in a small town, uh, there are no Muslims in her town, it's a small church town, there's only one church in the entire town, she's the daughter of the pastor, and she saw the Kaaba in her dream, and she had no idea what this cube thing was, but she knew that people were praying around a cube, 
So she started Googling, praying around Cube. And she actually stumbled upon pictures of the Kaaba. And through that, she figured out that that's actually about Islam. And she starts looking up Islam. This girl living in a church town in Alabama is looking up Islam because she saw a dream about the Kaaba. Then she finds out that there's a, you know, these, these people, they go to the, they, the, the Muslim church. She started looking up Muslim church. She finds out that they're called a mosque or a masjid. And then she starts looking those up on Google Maps and finds out that there's one about 100 miles from where she lives. So guess what she does? She drives over. Like Allah made a call to her in her dream. But even if you hear a call, you still want to get a closer look. So she went to get a closer look. And she went into this masjid, one of those masjids where women have no place. So when she walked in, uh, there were a bunch of people having a halaqa or something, and they got really angry at her, because she wasn't dressed like Muslim, well, so she was wearing hijab and, you know. So they started yelling at her. You can't be here, no, no, no. Please, this is, a, this is not a, this is a, this is a sacred place. Please stand outside. Somebody will come and talk to you. She walked away. She left, she drove back a hundred miles crying. I want nothing to do with this. Ah, I thought it was from God, it's probably from the devil. Good thing, good thing I tried to check it out. A couple of weeks go by. Girl sees a dream again. Same Skaba again. It's messing with her, it's not letting her go. So somehow or the other, she reaches out to, she calls another masjid this time, uh, you know, in uh, Louisiana. And this is back in the day, so she fortunately got in touch with Sheikh Omar Suleiman. And she said, can I come to the mosque this time? And she said, no, 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 don't come to the mosque. We'll meet you at another, we'll meet you at an Islamic school or somewhere else. And so he, w he went with some people and he met with her and they talked and she took shahada. <laughs> And then she, I, I was teaching a divine speech in uh, New Orleans, in Louisiana, at the University of Louisiana. And she was attending and she told me her story there. It's crazy. She had only been Muslim a week then. Now she was coming closer, but what pushed her away? Why did I bring this up? People pushed her away. People are coming closer, and if they really got to see the Prophet, they would get pushed away or drawn in completely. They would get drawn in completely, right? And that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be ambassadors of Allah's Messenger. Alayhi salatu wasalam.